If you're running some sort of virtual event, maybe it's a webinar or a workshop or a presentation, you definitely want to record it so that you can send it to event attendees, people who couldn't attend the event, or you could turn it into a YouTube video or repurpose the content into promo for social media. In today's video, I'm going to walk you through how you can record these remote events. We'll walk through what equipment you should have, what software to use, how to stream live and record at the same time, I'll give you some tips for running the event in a way that will be interesting for the viewers, and finally, how you can repurpose the event into bite-sized pieces for promotion. So let's get into it. All right, first up, what equipment do you need? Number one, a reliable internet connection. If you're streaming, you want to make sure that your internet connection is stable. However, when it comes to the recording part of this, the software that I'm going to recommend will always record locally on every participant's computer. This means that despite internet connection, you will receive a high quality recording afterwards. But if you are live streaming, yes, you want a stable internet connection. You also want a reliable camera. This could be a professional DSLR, or your smartphone, or an external webcam. Just make sure that you have a device that can capture high quality footage. To add an extra layer of professionalism, invest in a stable tripod. This will ensure steady shots and prevent any shaky or blurry footage. You also want high quality audio. A really good microphone option is the ATR2100X. You can get this on Amazon for under $100 and you plug it into your computer via USB. Lighting is also something that you want to consider because you want your video to be lit properly. To do this for free, set up facing a window. You can do this on a budget by looking into a professional ring light. And to really up your game, you can get some softbox lights. I'll link some options for these in the description. If the event is going to have two or more people having a conversation over the web, you'll also want a wired pair of headphones. Any around the house will do, but if you have a bit of a budget, I recommend the ATH M20X. Lastly, you'll need a software to host your remote event. So let's go over the best one on the web. Riverside is an online platform where you can record, live stream, edit, and repurpose your content all online. Riverside will capture high quality video and audio from your computer and provide you with separate tracks of every participant or screen shares, media files, or presentation files afterwards. You can download these tracks to edit the content together externally, or you can edit the full recording on the Riverside platform, and I'm gonna show you how to do that coming up real soon. So let's briefly go through what you can do with Riverside. So this is your Riverside dashboard. You want to create a new studio for your recording. So you can name your event, and then you also want to schedule it for the date of your event. Let's do this at two o'clock p.m. Choose a time zone, whatever time zone you're located in. Press create. On this page, you can directly create a Google Calendar event for your event. You can invite anybody who's going to be a part of the event. Maybe it's an interviewee or maybe a co-host using this Google invite. You'll see that within the description of the event, they will have access to the studio as a guest for recording. You can also invite participants using this invite button. Make sure guest is selected here under the drop down menu. So you can either copy the link or send them an email with the link to the studio. Now here, you can also change this link to an audience link. This is the link that you would send to anybody who wants to attend the live recording of your event. So this is the link that you would put in any promotion. This means that viewers can watch you record live on the Riverside platform, but they won't be a part of the final recording. But they can chat with you using the chat function. Now, this is important. If you are creating an audience link, you'll want to go into studio settings by clicking the three dots beside the studio and heading into settings, and you'll want to set the studio to public. Okay, great, the studio is ready to record and live stream, and anybody can access it with those links that I showed you earlier. Now, what if you wanted people to view somewhere else, maybe like on YouTube or on Facebook? No problem, within the settings, scroll down and you'll see this live streaming option. Here you can toggle on wherever you'd like to live stream and you can set it up on the platform where you are live streaming. I'm not gonna go through each one of those, but we do have a video that will walk you through how to set up your live stream on each of these platforms and I'll link it above. This means that your event will now be live streamed simultaneously to whatever platform you set up within the settings, as well as on Riverside. People can watch the Riverside stream with that audience link that I mentioned earlier. All right, now you're set up to stream. At the time of the event, or a bit before, cause you know, you always wanna be there a little bit beforehand, you're going to head into the studio. 
On this page, you can set up any equipment that you'd like to use. So you can set up your camera. If you'd like to use your phone as an external webcam, I'll link a video above on how to do that. You can also set up your microphone. For this video, I'm just going to use my MacBook webcam and my MacBook microphone. But if you did want a high quality recording, you want to make sure on this page to select which equipment that you'd like to use. And of course, if there's gonna be more than one person in the recording, you're also going to want to select your external headphones from here. Put your name in here, select whether you are or are not using headphones, and join the studio. This is the studio where you will record and stream from. If you're having someone else, either a guest or a co-host, they're going to show up here beside you. I'm not inviting anybody to this recording, so I'm just going to exit out of that. You'll also see how many people are in the audience right up here. Right now it says it's just me because it's just me, but if there were audience members, you would see that there, but this is just the audience members that are joining on the Riverside platform, not the audience members that are gonna be on YouTube or Facebook or anywhere else that you set up live streaming. So there are a couple things to do ahead of time to set yourself up for a successful event and make sure that your viewers are engaged the whole way through. The more tools you use within the Riverside platform, the more dynamic and interesting your event will be for the attendees. Okay, so when you are ready to start the event, you would just press record. This just makes sure you're recording, you're not gonna forget. You can always chop off the beginning and the end of the event later. So, the things that you want to do before the event. If you're going to be sharing your screen, make sure that you already have the tabs open that you want to share. If you have a presentation, you can pre-upload it using this presentation feature. If you're gonna be using any media throughout the event, maybe a video that you wanna show people, then you are going to head to this media board, press this plus button, and upload those media files. Now you can preview these files by default. You'll see here that preview is selected, but you wanna make sure that that live button is toggled on so that the media actually plays during the stream. Now, if you have talking points that you want to hit throughout the presentation, then you can use this script feature and add any talking points up here. Your audience, your co-hosts, nobody else will see these talking points, but this will keep you on track throughout the event. Now, I'm going to show you each type of media so that you know what it looks like in the final recording. So if I wanted to share my screen, I would head down to the share, I would press screen, and here I can use either a Chrome tab, a window, or share my entire screen. I'm just gonna share with you this beautiful YouTube channel that I think you should definitely subscribe to. It has tons of fun stuff all about video content creation and podcast creation. It will definitely help you up your game. So you can see in the studio, this is what a share screen will look like. Now when you're done sharing the screen, make sure to press stop sharing at the top here and it will just go back to you speaking. It's always important to make sure that you end either screen sharing or a presentation or your media after you're done using it, and I'm gonna show you why when we get to the editor, but this is going to make the final edit a lot more dynamic. Now, maybe you have a presentation that you want to do. You're gonna press share, presentation, and upload that presentation. So when you share the presentation, this is what it's going to look like on the screen, and you can navigate through the presentation with the arrow keys on your keyboard. So when I'm done presenting with the presentation, I would press stop. Now it's gonna go back to a full screen of me, like we mentioned earlier, this is going to make it more dynamic for your audience. Now, if you play a piece of media from the media board, let's go down here to the media board. Remember to toggle live so that it plays live during the live stream and is embedded into the recording. Let's just watch this little Riverside mobile video from when Riverside released the app. It's an oldie, but a goodie. Now it may be choppy on your end, don't worry about that, the final recording will be a nice clean video. Now as you can see, once it's done playing, it ends itself, so you don't even have to worry about ending that. Now as audience members chat in, you'll see this chat function at the bottom. Everybody can message in here so you can read their comments and respond to questions in real time. Encourage engagement by making them aware of this feature at the beginning of the event. Okay, so once you're done the event, you would end the recording. Now everything is going to upload to the cloud to be accessed afterwards. The time that this takes will depend on your internet connection. I have very slow internet, so it takes a while, but this can be almost instantaneous depending on your internet connection. When it's done uploading, there'll be a little view recordings button that you can press and it will take you to that recordings page. So this is your recordings page. This is where all of the recordings from the event will live. 
So if you scroll down, you'll see here that you have separate tracks for everything that was in the recording. So we have our screen shares, we have our presentation, and we have our media board video, as well as a separate track for my audio and video. And if you had other participants, they would come on a separate track as well. So quick note, let's say you had a guest join halfway through the recording. When you go to download the video, the raw video is going to give you just that section of the recording where they were involved in the recording. If you download the aligned video, this will put a blank space before and after the actual recording so that it stays synced with the rest of the video. This track will take up the full duration of the recording. So you can download all of these tracks separately in order to edit on an external editor, or you can use the Riverside editor to put it all together. Let's walk through this with the content that we just recorded. So I'm going to go to create new edit. You'll see throughout the recording when it was just me talking, it will be just me on the screen. And you'll see when I'm sharing the screen, the share screen pops up with me on the side here. And when I end the screen share, it goes back to just me talking again. When the presentation comes up, it's the presentation with me on the side. And then when I close the presentation, it's just me talking again. Same thing goes for the media video. So this is why it was so important to close out your screen shares and your presentations in the recording so it makes it more dynamic during the final edit. It allows the editor to switch the layout in the final video. So here you can add things like captions to your video. This is going to help with accessibility and SEO. You can also brand those captions to match your brand. You can take out sections from the text-based editor by highlighting over whatever you'd like to take out and pressing delete. This will take it out of the text-based editor and will be reflected in the final video. So this means you can take out that beginning ramble, that ending ramble, and any mistakes that you made, if there were any technical difficulties, you can take all of those sections out of the final recording directly on the Riverside editor. You can also brand the video with your logo, and then you can export it in up to 4K depending on your camera capabilities. Now that was just a very brief overview. If you want more of a walkthrough of the Riverside editor, you can head to the video linked above. Okay, so the last thing that we're going to talk about here is repurposing your content. You can share highlights from the event extremely easily. How you ask? Well, let me show you. So I'm going to head back to the dashboard. If I scroll down here, you'll see this magic clips feature. Now this is gonna take the most interesting and engaging parts of your video and optimize it for social media platforms. So let's press generate clips and see what happens. Now, if you were using the presentation feature or the screen share function or the media board, I recommend not putting those elements in these vertical clips. The reason being is it's going to be hard to change that landscape clip and reformat into a vertical version. Now, this is an easy fix to take these out. So you're gonna head into one of your magic clips. You're going to head to tracks and press hide on all of the media. Now it will just be the participants on the screen. Captions are added automatically when you do create a magic clip. You can move them around the screen and you can change the captions to fit your branding. And now you have a bunch of highlights to share out from your event. Obviously, the longer your event is, the more magic clips will be created and the more highlights will be created. You can also change the aspect ratio of these so that it is repurposable on various different platforms. Pretty cool, right? There's another way that you can repurpose this event. Back on the recordings page, you're going to press this generate show notes button. So maybe you want to send an email newsletter with takeaways from the event, or maybe you want to set up a follow-up LinkedIn post or Instagram post. You can repurpose these show notes into various kinds of content. Let me show you how to do it. So now you'll have a summary that you can share out about the event, or you can copy these show notes, head over to ChatGPT, and you can use the prompt, turn this into an email newsletter, and paste those show notes. Now ChatGPT will give you a follow-up newsletter that you can send out to attendees and anybody who didn't attend the event, along with the link to watch the recorded event. Now you can also say, Turn this into a LinkedIn post and paste that content. And now you have a LinkedIn post to share out relating to the event. You can use ChatGPT to turn this into tons of different kinds of written content. And there you go. That's how you can live stream, record, edit, 
and repurpose your remote event. If you have any questions, make sure to leave them in the comments. I answer those personally. Now, make sure to subscribe to the Riverside YouTube channel for more content like this. And I'll leave this video here to help you figure out the editor a little bit more. And I'll also leave a video here that YouTube thinks you're really gonna like. Thanks again for watching. My name is Bridget, and I'll see you next time.